they kind of make enough for everybody, but you guys will have to share, but you can keep them. What, so. Just one. He's a ram. <clears throat> You can write on whatever is your piece, but you'll have to share it. Okay, I'll start out talking about uh, metals. Uh, let's start with platinum. Using platinum as a more pure metal when they put it in jewelry, you might find it like 10% uh, iridium or 5% ruthenium, and uh, but it'll be. 90% or 95% platinum. Platinum was always used as uh, a white metal for setting diamond in because it didn't, back when they sold really white diamonds, it didn't impart any color to the diamonds. And then gold. Uh, the uh, mineral, or the element name for gold is aurora, which means shining dawn in Latin. And um, gold is usually like 24 carat. That means it's pure gold. And it's always stated as 999 fine because chemically you can't get anything more than anything purple. And if uh, the 10 carat is like 10 parts gold and uh, 14 parts other metals. And if you divide that out, it comes out to 416, which is what you see stamped inside the rings a lot of times. And if they stamp it in there, they're legally supposed to have a trademark stamped in there with it. So that you can say who says this is pure, whatever, whatever the purity is, but you have to say who says it. So, and uh, if you see 14 carat, it's uh, usually 583, sometimes it's 585. The 585 is usually done by the better companies to make it look like they're a, a more pure company. 585 is only three one thousandths of a percent better. Uh, I mean, two one thousandths of a percent better, so it's nothing really. And if you, if you have 18 day, it's 0 0.750, which is three quarters gold. <coughs> the term carat, K A R A T, is, uh, means alloy, and that's why gold is, is these alloys. And these alloys, uh, can be different things. You've probably heard of the uh, yellow gold, the green gold, rose gold, white gold. Well, the yellow gold is uh, usually zinc, copper, and silver mixed together. Uh, the green gold is gold and silver mixed together. It has a pastel green color. Uh, rose gold is copper and gold mixed together. And uh, white gold is either nickel or palladium. Nickel is slightly magnetic, so if you have a real powerful mag mag magnet, you could probably get uh, a nickel gold chain to respond to the magnet. For palladium is used sometimes, it's a more expensive metal by far, but it doesn't impart it as, as white a color as the nickel does. And uh, gold and the other precious metals are sold by the troy ounce. Troy ounce is not the regular ounce. The regular ounce is like 28 point something grams. A troy ounce is 31.1 grams. Then when you get to talking about jewelry, there are things that are plated. Uh, plating is just a few atoms thick. There's not much gold there at all. And then if one says gold field, you may see uh, 1 12K or 1 20th 14K. The gold field is a legal term, and it's supposed to be 1 20th uh, a layer on the outside that's at one twentieth the weight of the entire article. That's what that means. Then silver, uh, Latin name is argentum, which means bright. Uh, of course, nine 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 five. Sterling silver is uh, nine two five, which is seven and a half percent copper. That's been an age-old description ever since way back in England, I guess. But uh, real grain sells this stuff that's called Argentum. <clears throat> and it's, it's 935, which is only two one hundredths of a percent more silver. And uh, 
supposedly it will stay um, shinier longer and won't tarnish as easy. Um, as far as gold is concerned here in the United States, 10 carat is about as low as we go. But I think in England they have some that's like 8 carat. Anything less than 10 carat tarnishes real, real quick, actually. So that's it for the <coughs> metals. Uh, I can answer some questions and uh, we can save them all to the end. Okay, jewelry it can come from animals, plants, or minerals. Uh, originally, I, I had this real, I'm just going to talk about the minerals part for the most part. Um, animal jewelry would be like bones have been worn forever. Uh, ivory is a real popular one still yet, but not so anymore. Uh, pearls are an animal. Uh, for plants, wood is often used for jewelry. Um, amber is often used for jewelry. It's a tree rosin. And if you get an amber with an insect in it, then you really have a more valuable piece. Uh, so mostly we talk about minerals. And I had this really nice uh, scientific definition for mineral with all the ifs, ands, and buts as science definitions always have. And Jessica said, Daddy, this is not a science class. So <laughs> I went with the, uh, the old mineral definition where when man first looked around and decided he wanted to study nature, he divided things into three kingdoms, uh, plants and animals and minerals. So our definition is everything else is a mineral. So uh, gems, uh, gemstones. They are gemstones because of the rarity, the hardness, the cut, the clarity, the color, and uh, of course they're weighed by carrots. That's spelled C-A-R-A-T. A carrot is two tenths of a gram. It is sometimes divided up into a hundred points. So uh, we'll talk about these things as long as we go. But let's see, rarity. Diamonds, you would think, might be the rarest thing out there, but uh, they're not rare at all. There's a lot more colored stones that are more rare than diamonds. Hardness is one consideration. We'll talk about that more. I have a most skill of hardness down here. And starting with diamond to hardness, going to talc. And you know, talc is the salt that make it into talcum powder, just grind up the rock. And uh, there's some things over here that correspond to different hardnesses. <clears throat> Um, of course, anything, people used to say those scratch glass, it's something good, but anything above, like, uh, let's see, glass is about a 5.5, I believe. Yeah. Anything above that would scratch it. So this is a relative hardness table. There's nothing that says this is 10 times harder than this one, this is 10 times harder than that one. It's just a relative hardness. Of course, um, if you're going to buy a gemstone, you want to know how well it's cut and polished and all that, and then how clear it is if it's a clear gemstone. But a lot of them, you know, you can't see through them. Uh, the color, how nice the color is, you want to look at that. But then when you start talking about identifying gemstones, um, one of the ways is like optical characteristics. So you've all probably done this, you put pencil down in water and of course it'll, it'll look like it bends when you look at it. That's called refraction. That's where the light enters, anytime light enters something, it bends or it refracts. But then not only does it bend, it separates into colors with uh, red being bent, not as much, and the blue more. So one of the greatest explanations of refraction is uh, if you look up in the sky and see a rainbow, what you're looking at is that light being separated by the water, the droplets in the air. And when it gets reflected back, it makes the rainbow. And you have to remember you always have to have your back to the sun to see a rainbow. That, that's why you see one is the, the refraction or the dispersion. Or it, uh, this version of the different colors. Now the simplest of gemstones uh, do the refraction, but 
there's only a few, like, um, I'm not going to get into all the crystal graphic systems or anything, but the cubic system is the only one that uh, has the single refraction. All the other minerals and everything on here we're going to talk about, other than like diamond or fluorite or water, as long as it's liquid. When it becomes a crystal, then it no longer has these same properties at all. But what every other mineral does, it not only bends the light and separates it into colors, it will separate that light into two rays. And uh, Ms. Noah's brought us some things over here we can look at. Uh, this piece of selenite gypsum and calcite does the same thing. We'll look at this and you can see two rays. I can show you how to lay it down and look and see two rays. That makes two images on the back side. If you took the pencil and you stuck it down in to the crystal, if you could do that, you would see two pencils. Then, of course, those two rays are always split the colors into all their corresponding colors. Okay. I was going to talk, well, we'll talk a little bit about uh, when light goes through a mineral. It does all kinds of strange things, and that's how you can study them. And all these things have names, and they can be measured and studied and all that stuff. But what it does, light travels through any mineral, uh, anything other than the cubic system. It travels at two different speeds. So it's going to split the light in two different rays, and in different directions it may go you have two rays going this way at one speed and two rays going this way at another speed. But that's not really the end of it because when you get into the, I mean, the other crystal systems, you may, it'll still split it into two rays because you can't see three. You only see two dimensions. Light travels three different speeds through some of these minerals. And uh, you're going to study some crystallography. That's what you're going to get into or mineralogy. When you get into identifying gemstones and stuff like that, which used to be, there were a lot of labs around, but there's not hardly any labs anymore. Okay, the four traditional precious stones with diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emerald. So this is where we get into the jewelry stuff. And it gets more confusing all the time. Uh, diamond is, of course, an element just carbon. The ruby and sapphire are the same thing. It's a mineral corundum. Uh, emerald, uh, of course, ruby is a red kind, and uh, sapphires come all different colors of the rainbow. There is everything from white to black. And emerald, uh, you get aquamarine from emerald. From, uh, beryl. beryl is a mineral. Uh, emerald and aquamarine are two uh, gemstones that come from beryl. But there's also golden barrel, red barrel, and any one of a myriad of colors there. So you can't go by color when you're talking about gemstones. Because every gemstone, if it's pure, it will be usually clear. And all the other colors are caused by some kind of impurity. Um, and often, uh, you will get gradations in the colors. It'll grade from one to the other, and there's always been arguments about what makes a ruby, how red does it have to be, but it's corundum. I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's just red. Uh, and they've always argued about things like that. Uh, like uh, one of the minerals that's really difficult to be the feldspars, which uh, Things like the Alexanderite comes from, or um, see, lots of other different feldspar, really beautiful stones. Morganite, I think, is one. But feldspar grades into different minerals, just a ton of different minerals, just because about crystallized out of the magma. 
So it, it's real varied. Uh, one of the things local that uh, grades is like the calcite. It can grade easily from calcite to dolomite simply by uh, manganese ion being carried by groundwater. I think there's a limestone layer just north of the of the road cut. You can check it over here and it'll be dolomite. You can check it over here and it'll be limestone. So it, it's pretty interesting. And for jewelry, there's always a syn synthetic there's a synthetic variety of everything. It, diamonds and everything else. Uh, they've been growing rubies since like 1902 in sapphires. They've been growing diamonds since the 30s. And they um, have been growing commercial diamonds since 1955, I believe. So they've been around for a long time. I always there haven't been any natural, I mean, any synthetic diamonds on the market till recently. But it was always believed that Russia was making them <clears throat> and sell them in the United States. So then jewelry get into um, all the, the synthetic ones, which are real. There is no difference between those and naturals. Uh, all the chemical, physical properties are all the same. But there's always been arguments, how can you tell if it's one or the other? Well, some of you can, some of you can't. But that's always been a question. Um, some of the uh, really nice synthetics are like cubic zirconia, or uh, that was marketed a while back. It actually has a hardness of 8.5, so it's a real nice stone. It has more dispersion than diamond, so it has more rainbows, and it's a lot prettier. And then there's uh, Mosinite, which has been a more recent one, has a hardness of 9.25. That's actually silicon carbide. It's a really hard stone. It can take all the heat that a diamond can take. And when it first came out, it was marketed to a lot of jewelers as diamonds. And it took them a long time to figure out it would. Uh, it can be, of course, all of these can be all kinds of different colors too. And one of the most recent ones is strontium titanite. Uh, you see this on the jewelry shows a lot. That stuff is gorgeous. It has rainbows you wouldn't believe. Just, they're everywhere. It has a lot greater dispersion than, than diamond or mosinite or anything. It's beautiful stuff. But it only has a hardness of 5.5. So it wouldn't do too well in the rain. Uh, but any jewelry you shouldn't wear all the time because uh, it wears out pretty quickly. And if you wear a softer stone, pretty soon you're about nothing but a rock. So um, all of these minerals, natural or synthetics or whatever, all are treated. They can be treated with one thing or another. One of the most common things um, in years past was to treat them with radiation. And at first they were putting diamonds close to a nuclear this is in Spain. They would put diamonds close to a nuclear source. And uh, a lot of times diamonds and other gemstones would become uh, radioactive. And they were marketed in the United States. And in fact, this is an older book. And it has a section in there about a way to tell if it were radioactive or not would be laid on a piece of photographic paper overnight and then develop it, to develop it the next morning and you'd have a black spot where the mineral was. And that would be it. But now, uh, photographic paper, you probably don't even know what that is anymore. <laughs> they don't have that stuff anymore. But, uh, that, I mean, all these treatments and everything have been started way back. Uh, I saw an explanation one, one time where they were talking about the crown jewels and they talk, were talking about these emeralds. And emeralds were notorious for not having such a great color and everything. And they had talked about how they had put a foil back behind it, like pounded out silver real thin to make the emerald more shiny. Diamonds have been treated forever. 
the Morse honey and colored diamonds have always been there. And the, uh, they use different kinds of radiation to make them more colorful. But they could use radiation other than uh, harmful radiation. Uh, for example, one time I had this lady come into my shop and she said, uh, I have these uh, moonstone earrings. And she said, I went to the dentist yesterday and I put them on and when I got home, they were this beautiful blue. She said, what happened? I said, uh, you did x-rays? She said, yeah, you got x-rays. And they had turned those stones a beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest to try it because that's going to depend on the dang the elements that are in there. And one might be blue, one might be gray when you get home. So, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> if they come out the same rock, maybe so. Uh, of course, you have all these treatments. Uh, a lot of these uh, stones that I have from Brazil, you can count on every one of those being treated. And a lot of treatments are permanent, some of them are not. Uh, like, so, some of them, if you look through Rio Grande, you'll say treated or you'll say simulated, and they usually tell you what's going on so that you know. Uh, simulated means it, it's a fake, it's something that looks like it. But one of the neat things in here, uh, like if you're looking through birthstones and you want to simulate a birthstone, it'll say simulated garden. But that simulation is garden. That that's a red or ruby sapphire, and so that's really neat. You know, I'd rather have that in the garden. So, as jewelers and uh, jewelry buyers, what world do you do? You don't know if it's simulated, treated, or anything. You can expect it to be treated, that's for sure. But don't ever buy jewelry as an investment. Uh, if you've got money to throw away like that, go get you a lottery ticket. Get some money better spent. But you buy jewelry because you think it's beautiful, because of the enjoyment that you get out of it, or because you know the artist or like the work that you want to buy because it has a beautiful finish on it or it's a beautiful color or something like that. Look at it as a piece of art, just like you would a painting or something like that. Then you won't be disappointed. So now we'll talk about quartz. That's what we all like, is the agate. But uh, quartz, of course, in its pure form, is clear, almost clear, or whatever. Those are the crystal quartz. And I have all kinds of colors. It comes in every color of the rainbow. Um, like the yellow citrine would be the same color as the barrel or the yellow sapphire can't go by color. Uh, some of the quartz mineral will be amethyst. Purple amethyst is quartz. It's real pretty. And I've got lots of uh, things here we can take a look at and show you all the difference. Uh, but then we get into the agate. Well, agate is something that is used to be we call it cryptocrystalline, but now we call it Nano crystal. That's the new name for it. And now, a nanometer, I'll try to give you an example for how big a nanometer is. This is an 18 gauge piece of wire. You can take a look at it here. It's almost one millimeter thick. One millimeter divided into one million parts is a nanometer. So that's how big the crystals are in that. But it is crystal. Uh, Agate would include, uh, like her own quartz, the same agate and onyx and jasper, chalcedony, flint, chert, chrysoprase, adventurine, tiger eye, all that is quartz. It's just a matter of how much junk is in there, how many impurities. Uh, well, what chalcedony? What, how is it, does it compare to the nano? It is, same thing. It's the same no, no thing. Difference. Okay, all right. It, it's awesome. it, it just, it's just tiny. 
milli or nano is it's a nanometers. <laughs> all right. That's a metric system. All right, I'm with you. Okay. Okay, that's pretty much all I got. I've got all these examples and things up here we can take a look at and you can ask questions. And... Well, I have one more question. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, to me, a dumb question is one you don't ask. I'm that's a very right. What's the difference between the carrot with a K and the carrot with a C? Okay, carrot with a K. K means alloy. All right. It means a mixture. Right. And a C is a weight. Okay. A carrot uh, is exactly two tenths of a gram. All right, yeah. There's five carrots right in a gram. And the carrot name actually comes from Egypt when they had this plant and uh, I don't know what it was, but they used these carrot seeds. And they were remarkably pretty much the same size all the time, so they used those as carrots. And that's where the name came from, it was an Egyptian seed. Can, can a cabbage on like this have carrot weight? Everything has carrot weight. Okay. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. All right. I mean, you could rate, you know, in uh, fractions of a pound or grains or whatever. Carrot is just a, a weight that is commonly used in jewelry. So I was sure I've got my safe up head for years. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> the best you can get out of it is go get it out and lay it out and look how beautiful it is. And uh, that's the value of that jewelry. It's like the value is what somebody's willing to pay you for it on a given day. As far as money is concerned, yeah. yeah. Uh, the value is like if you had this house with this beautiful view outside, you know, a view of the ocean or whatever, you know, that's going to be a lot more valuable house. And I can tell you another little instance here. This guy goes out in his backyard and he looks around and he sees these uh, old cars he's got back there. He has Studebaker, Edsel, uh, these maybe an old 64 and a half cor uh, Mustang or Corvette, something like that. This stuff is gorgeous to him. If it was in a museum, it'd be worth a fortune. I mean, and they all belong in a museum. Well, his wife goes out there and looks. And she sees a snake pit and a mosquito haven and rats and mice everywhere and, <laughs> and bees nests all over the place. Well, he goes in there and he looks in his in her jewelry box and he sees diamond or she looks in there and she sees diamonds and emeralds and beauties and beautiful beautiful things a ton of red and black like the agate there's all these gorgeous stones he goes in there and looks and says man if i had the money to spend on that just some of it restore that 57 four thunderbird i got right there <laughs> So there you go. It's a good analogy. Yeah. Exactly. Anybody else have any further questions? Everybody's encouraged to go up and look. Thank you. you.